Good morning, friends. It's Christmas Day, and it's such a wonderful time, and I've arranged everything here to get ourselves ready for today's Bible talk, our special Bible talk on Christmas Day. And I'm just waiting for Kate. Oh, Merry here Christmas. she is. Oh, nice to see you. Merry Christmas. Thank you for rushing over. Oh, crazy morning at our house for Christmas, it but is. I'm here, so Merry Christmas. So nice to have everybody here, and it's so lovely to have you join us. And what we're going to do today is we're going to read a bit of scripture to celebrate Christmas, and we're going to talk about what I think is one of the really important things for us to take home from this message today. And then we're going to have a little bit of song, and we're going to show you our two special props of the episode. We have two animal props of the episode, so stay tuned. So today is Christmas, and what we do on Christmas Day is we read a little bit from the Gospel of Luke about the birth of Jesus. And this is what we read. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Then the angels had left them and have gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed that the shepherds said such things to them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Isn't that a marvelous story? And of the many things that we can see in the story, Kate, I think at the forefront is that Christmas is about the gift of Jesus to us, the gift of God's very own Son, the gift of God's very own self, and all of the gifts that we exchange on Christmas are a kind of echo, a kind of repeat, a kind of movement that goes with the grain of this gift. And one of the things that we've had to do this past year is to maybe think about all the ways that we've experienced gifts in our lives. This has been a challenging year, wouldn't you agree? A, a little bit. I would, yes. I would agree with that. And the <laughs> gifts are the best part, especially it's, when they're filled with love. It's true, isn't it? It's amazing. We've been full of gifts this year. And, and what we want to do right now is name a couple of the gifts Ooh, that we have. I brought one. Some toilet oh. paper. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what we learned <laughs> is that in March and April, when we first went into shelter in place, that toilet paper 
was a gift worth more than gold, <laughs> frankincense, and myrrh. Who People knew? needed it. Who knew? <laughs> Something so simple would become so necessary. And now it comes pre-wrapped. I know, it's, it's lovely. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what other gifts do we have? We have some images, I think, that are fun to show. It's um, true. A little bit of a throwback to what we were going to look at. Um, but do we have a story we wanted to tell first, or do we want to go back in time? We can go to our story because it seems like we've gone there already. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so why don't you tell, this is called The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry. Oh, the Im illustrations are delightful and they just really show a lot of love and compassion, which is what that story is about. It's about two, two young newlyweds living in New York City. And in the story, they're looking for a way to give each other all that they can. They don't have very much. So the woman in this story is, has a plan, and she goes out into New York City, and it looks like it might be cold. She put on her old coat and her old hat, and she stepped out to go and cut off her hair. Her hair was this luxurious length, probably down past her knees in the story, and it was a very precious item in their marriage, in their family, and in their home. And she decided to, to go see someone about that. And she had this idea, and it was just filled with love and honor and cherishing moments, and she cut it off, all of it, um, to purchase a gift for her husband, for her beloved. And there she is. Isn't that just an interesting way of looking at it? She's still stunning. Her eyes are still filled with love, and, but her hair is now cut short. Um, she waited patiently at the door for her husband to come home. It was Christmas Eve and just waited and waited and waited. And he's always on time. She had dinner ready to go as soon as he came in. And then um, he was there and he saw her. And his look is still full of like, I love you, of wonder and curiosity. But he's also probably thinking, what just happened? <laughs> so she explains to him, gives him the gift. And she bought him a very precious chain to go on his pocket watch, which was a prized item in their marriage as well. So she had her glorious hair and he had this pocket watch. And she sold her hair to purchase a chain to go on his pocket watch. And she gave it to him. And then he gave a gift back where he had actually sold his pocket watch to purchase combs to hold her beautiful hair back. So he sold the item that was most precious to him and she sold the precious, an item that was most precious to her to buy each other a gift. And she's showing it to him and he just laughs. He's like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. We did these things, but we should just set them off to the side because we have each other. We have the love for one another and that's what our Christmas is about. So let's put away our things and just cherish one another. And at the end of the story, O. Henry writes about the wise men, the magi that came to visit the Christ child and brought some beautiful gifts to show their love for him. And uh, he writes that of all the things that we can give in this world and of all the gifts that are given, the wisest ones are the ones that give a part of ourselves. And he writes that this young man and this woman in the story they are the magi and one of the beautiful things about this story that i think is uh, important for us to notice is that each of us has a chance to be gift givers because each of us has received the gift of jesus and because of that we are rich in what we can share with others there's always something of ourselves that we can give because god has given us his very self in jesus christ and in the past year, we've all received incredible gifts as a church as we've made our way. And for me, at the forefront of the gifts that I've received is the chance to lead worship with my beautiful wife, Claire. Claire is a singer-songwriter. She and I have been married for more than 30 years, but we had never had the opportunity to lead worship together. And when we had to shelter in place and when only two of us could be in the church who were related, Claire and I led worship for three months here. And I've asked Claire to come and lead us in a song. Hi, Bill. Hello. Hi, Kate. Hi, Claire. All right. What better Christmas Day song than O Little Town of Bethlehem, a tribute to the home where Jesus was born? 
We're going to sing a couple of verses of that. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so Claire. much. What a my blessing. Pleasure to oh, share. Isn't that delightful? What a blessing. Um, and my favorite lines in that uh, hymn are the last few words where it says, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Hmm. Because Christmas is about the gift of God's self to us, and that brings new life to you and me. Kate, like you had some wonderful things to share. I do. We've, we've done a lot mm. since March. Yeah, March 13th is when the schools closed around here. And um, we had some images that we pulled together that we wanted to show you as a little bit of a flashback to like, yeah, a lot of good did still happen in 2020. And yes, we're looking forward to 2021, but there was a lot of good. So we can show you some of those images if you'd like to see. So church went to jammies. I don't know. <laughs> That's actually my living room. And that this is the first Sunday when we were watching church from home. And probably, Bill and Claire, you're probably in that image right now if we looked really carefully. But yeah, we went to church in jammies. <laughs> and then um, we had masks made. And then yes, we, we had, had to some... make masks for each other because all of the hospital personnel couldn't um, get, uh, they had all the masks they could get and they needed even more. And so a bunch of people made masks. And I think that a group of volunteers from the church supplied about 300 masks and then we made our own we did and these went to all of the kids when they were going back to school so that message of you are loved was seen even though you couldn't see their smiles and then we read books online we tried something new if you haven't read it yet the dead sea squirrels series is fantastic it's, it's a spin-off of the veggie tales creator actually and um so i wouldn't go on live um tv via instagram and we would read stories in the evening as we were figuring out ways to connect and ways to find joy it was fun and we always were looking for god sightings this was one early on, I think that was in, in April of a sunrise over the pond by my house. And it was just a moment to pause and regroup and find a way to figure out what was coming next. Pentecost happened. <laughs> the bells got a little crazy. That's right, Pentecost, where people often wear red when they come to church, the bells took it up a notch. <laughs> but everybody else contributed too, and we had a lot of fun. You did some big things as well. And this was in April. We gave a, a leadership gift to Forgotten Harvest in Pontiac, and we took care of feeding the entire group of people that gathered together in Pontiac. All through Pontiac, we gave about a thousand meals away mm -hmm. that day, and those are some of the wonderful volunteers 
that did the uh, the distribution and we did it in a way that was so beautiful and so moving and um, I'll never forget that day it was really special we continued to find ways to share God's love. Some of the youth uh, created a t-shirt. This was going to be a little bit of our vacation Bible school, a little bit of our kids Sunday that we were planning, and we found a way to still create that shirt and share it with one another. So when the youth went out to serve during the summer, they were wearing the same shirt too, and I think we have an image of that in a few minutes as well. Um, but we still had milestones. Big things still happened in our lives. Um, kids graduated from third grade here, which is the end of the godly play curriculum, and moved on to connect. Our middle schoolers, our new middle schoolers, moved up as well, and, and we found ways to celebrate that milestone. And this was a little care package that went to them. And then what we started to do is we wanted to recognize people when they had their birthdays. And so we sent out our wonderful minister of, of welcome, Janice Lovechuck, went out and brought blessing signs to everybody to remind them that they were blessed and beloved of us and more importantly blessed and beloved of god and so every time someone celebrated a birthday we put a little sign in their lawn it was fun i got one in my yard i think you got I one did too. too yeah <laughs> we did something really cool over the summer as well we did a special series on the fruit of the spirit um, and those are uh, love joy peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control. And we did a special sermon series because we wanted to help us gather those things that help us get through tough times. And they definitely helped. There was something for everybody in that program. Kelly and I found ways to still connect, even six feet apart, which is an important thing that we're still following. And um, that was our first time seeing each other. And we're like, oh, we miss you, but we have to hug six feet apart. So we, we found silly ways to still be connected. And we celebrated the Little Lambs kids here. They graduated from pre-K and went on to kindergarten in different ways, mostly virtual. And we still celebrate those milestones because that's part of how we build our community and connect through God's love and all of the things we do. The youth went out and served in big ways. Uh, they went up to Pontiac quite a bit this summer and found ways to serve in the needs that were the greatest, clearing out spaces to get ready for programs up there to grow, uh, working on gardens and finding ways to help things grow in lots of different ways, not just in space, but in actual food for people to eat as well. And then what we did is we decided to do worship outside. And so I asked my team in youth ministry and children's ministry to help create sacred space outdoors. And so Kate did an incredible job with these chalk stained glass that we put in the church, uh, parking uh, the, the, the road right outside of the church, which became kind of a, a piazza for us to gather and, and be together and to, to, to socialize. And we had services outside and there I am with Tom Booth and we're both wearing Hawaiian shirts because believe it or not, it was incredibly hot that, that Saturday evening, but we still had church. It was awesome to find a way to be outside and be safe and see God's light and lots of love and that fantastic Pringle chip tent. Yes, and we, we made a special tent that um, was able to withstand any winds that would come our way or rain, but also provided shade and helped us to create some space outside that was holy. and. We had so many people that would come. We did baptisms, we did funerals, we did regular worship. It was truly glorious. There was a wedding too. We had a wedding too, yeah. that's right. It was beautiful. And that's what it looked like. And we continued on with Sunday School Online this fall. Father Chris popped in for a little neighborly news edition where I interviewed him so we could get to know him better even though we couldn't all be together. And his amazing daughters came on and they're like, what is going on? Like, Don't worry, it's going to be great. <laughs> so we enjoyed having those special visitors. And Pastor Manisha came too. You were early on in our, our first neighborly no, news edition. No, I remember edition. that. I that was, was outdoors. You yes. were. We, were. we found a way to do it virtually after that, which was pretty fun and adventurous. So those are some of our Sunday school friends on the other side of that screen too, all leading in carefully to learn what she's going to say. And Thanksgiving happened. <laughs> it did happen. It was an incredible thing. We came up with this beautiful giving tree and, um, and Thanksgiving tree and uh, people could put the things that they were thankful for on it. And that was really fun. It was a way to watch their blessings grow, if you will. Even at the end of the fall season, all the leaves fall. There's still beautiful things that we were able to find. And then we did our first Bible talk, and we had Roxanne, who was with us. And she became our first prop 
of the episode, our first animal prop, and she was magnificent. And this is a picture of Roxanne being remarkably calm as I held her. <laughs> was that your first time holding a chicken? No, but this was the first time it was a good event, right? Yeah, the last <laughs> time I held a chicken, I was in a coop and I was a little boy and it just got out of hand because there are a bunch of chickens in there. And feathers everywhere. Yeah, there are feathers <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little tears. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. The choristers continued to rehearse and gather, as did the St. Francis Choir, all virtually, but there was a special moment that Christopher Wells was able to bring a couple of the choristers in so they could sing in the space and record to share out into the whole community. It was wonderful. And then we did Festival of Gifts, which was something we have been doing since 1929, and this time we did it outdoors as a drive through and I want to say that all of the youth that stepped forward to lead on that day, um, you are my heroes. You, it was hero time for you, and you stepped in, and you were brave, and you were bold, and you helped us serve others. And I can say truly that I have seen this year angels and wise men and Jesus because of you. The line was constant. We, we had probably about 300 cars each night that we did it, we gathered 1,300 gifts. We also gathered about $10,000 of donations. And all of that goes to people that we have a relationship with already, people that we love and know and serve regularly. And so it was such a beautiful way to celebrate the fact that this church continues to be a place that connects and embraces and, can, and serves others. It was wonderful. That was a little recap of the things we've done to share God's love in our community, to celebrate the gifts that are in our lives. And um, I got you something. I, I, before we do that, I just want to say one thing. Okay. I think to tie it all together, what this past year has been for us is we've discovered how great a gift this church is. That God has given us not only the gift of of God's self on Christmas, God's son Jesus, but also we've learned how important the gift this church has been to us and to our lives. Even though we haven't been able to be together physically, and even though we had to find new ways to be with each other spiritually, this church continued to be a remarkable blessing. And it's been a blessing in my life and in my family's life, and um, everybody has been a blessing to me. And I hope that as you go into this next year, that all of these things that we received as gifts in 2020 continue to bless us uh, powerfully, uh, particularly through Christ Church Cranbrook. We do have gifts. We do, and I couldn't have said that any better. That was perfectly balanced to really celebrate the gift that is the church and one another. So it's been a great year. Plus our cool <laughs> room here. Yeah, right? We have fun with this. So, yes, I got so you a gift. Gifts. Do you I, want to open it? I have a gift. Yes, I and I have it, a gift for you. I set mine for you under that tree. Thank you so much. This is so lovely. And this is beautifully wrapped. And you'll see that I did not wrap mine as well. <laughs> Look at how beautiful this, this incredible wrapping paper is. Thanks, I made it. I know. It looks like it's homemade. <laughs> Had some time. <laughs> oh, before. wow. So I know you love to walk, and those are some of my favorite mittens that I use when I run because the fingers come off and you can get I to your I love fingers. that. Look at that. Wow. They, fit. they are, yes, it fits perfectly. I can now operate my phone and then I just have to pop in. I got some mittens. Those Amazing. Fantastic, and they fit. Phew. Na yes. <laughs> and then you got a little picture of a cat. It's Cleo and Riding a chicken. And that's going to be a little foreshadowing. In just a moment, we're going to introduce <laughs> our animal gifts of 2020. But first, you have to get your gift. Is this one for me? That one is for you. And you can see I've very carefully wrapped it in a bag. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> yeah, it's what's inside that matters. <laughs> oh, let's see. Thank you for this. The bag oh, is some sparkles Oh, my pleasure. On it. And there's a sticker. <gasps> Oh my goodness. That, that is so beautiful. And I found that online by a wonderful independent um, fabricator, a knitter, and she um, uh, did it. I think it, it really looks amazing. 
That's gonna keep me warm this winter. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's so soft too. I know. Absolutely delightful. I'm excited. Thank I'm you. I'm so glad you like it. I do. I would put it on, but I'm afraid it's gonna mess up my microphone. I understand that. <laughs> it's okay. We'll look for it on the street. Definitely. I'll send a selfie. And then as Kate's wonderful little picture, and I, I, I don't know, you're not gonna be able to see it, but maybe you'll see it at one of our, um, one of our openings. Um, you have a little cat riding a chicken because the gifts that we received this 2020 have been our animal friends too. And I really mean this in that animals have been the blessing for so many of us in 2020. Uh, we have uh, many of us who work outside the home. We don't see our animals during the day and they have to develop their own routine and find their own way. And then all of a sudden we spent our time with each other 24 7 and their routines got interrupted and they had to figure out new ways to be with us and to be together and they have incredibly adapted to that and they also um, have been such a blessing to so many of us who have animals and so do you want to share Roxanne with the world one more time? Well, Roxanne's definitely here, and she wasn't feeling well after our last Bible talk. She decided to molt, which <laughs> is when you lose a lot of feathers, and she was having a little bit of a rough go. So she has healed up nicely and grew all these beautiful new feathers. Come here, Roxanne. You're okay. She's wow. talkative today. Yes, I'm going to not put her that. tutu on this Hello, time. Hello, yes. Hello, Roxanne. Hello, Roxanne. Yeah, so, that is so special. Roxanne, Roxanne is, is so back. Say hi to, to Father you. Bill and all of our friends in their living yeah, rooms and wow. on their iPads. That is so tablets. amazing. And then I have a little, um, I have a little um, animal friend that I'm just a little hesitant to bring her in. Oh, Roxanne dropped another feather. Oh, but that's I have. A so we're going to see how that this we goes. adopted named Cleo and Cleo came out to be with us as well. And she has been such a blessing to us. We are so happy to have her and she is so lovely and we're keeping a really good grip on her because there's know. a chicken. And yes, folks, this is live TV, but we don't know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen if both of these animals were let go of. and. It may not become uh, as family friendly a show. So we're gonna <laughs> just continue with saying hello to Cleo and we're gonna say hello to Roxanne. And then when Cleo gets back into her crate carefully, Claire's gonna finish with a beautiful song and then we'll have a prayer. Yeah, they did well. That, that was better not than so I bad. Expected. They were mostly curious about each other. Yeah, there's, there's been some squirrels hanging out by the chicken coop lately. <laughs> So it's been an interesting little battle for who can get yeah. the best bird seed. Yeah, Ro <laughs> Roxanne is, is quite calm today. It's lovely. She's something. What's our last song? The last song is my favorite Christmas song. I love the emotion in this song. And what's beautiful is it's also about gifts that we bring to God. Oh. 
blessing that is thank you thank Claire. you so much Claire that was really beautiful. beautiful thank you for performing that so beautifully we've just got a prayer to finish us with and if Kate you can get it while still holding on to Roxanne you can lead us we're gonna give it a go we're gonna give it a go Roxanne's gonna help me right okay right. here we go so let's get ready <laughs> almighty God you have given your only begotten son to take our nature upon him and to be born this day, to be born this day of a pure virgin, grant that we who have been born again and made by your children through adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom with you in the same spirit be honored and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as you go through the next few days and begin 2021 kate and i want to tell you that we hope that you will be daily renewed with the spirit of god we hope that the gift of christ which has been given to you so that you can be bearers of christ like mary bore jesus we we hope that this 2021 will be a time in which we've learned so much of what we have learned over the past year and continue to grow and go towards God. And may we learn again what it means to be Christians. May we learn again what it means to be full of grace. May we learn what it means again to be followers of Jesus now and always. Thank you so much. That's our Bible talk. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> blessing that is thank you thank Claire. you so much Claire